Hey everybody, a lot of people think that four letter words are the most powerful words in the English language. I on the other hand think that there is a three letter word that is much more powerful. This word is so powerful that a four year old can bring any adult to their knees using it. Do you know what it is? Any guesses? Why? It only takes about four or five why questions in a row to bring any adult to the rock bottom of their worldview or belief system, at which point they no longer have any good answers for the four-year-old and have to resort to a tautology such as, that's just the way it is, or God made it that way, or stop asking questions. So when you're nature journaling, asking questions is one of the most powerful things you can do. But not all questions are created equal, and there are certain questions in science that are tricky to answer. Why questions are almost in a category of their own. So I'm gonna break a few down, because if you're asking why questions while you're nature journaling, it might actually be disguising another type of question. So let's disguise, uh, dis dissect a couple why questions from my nature journal. Recently, I hope you can see this, I had a bird bone that I was nature journaling about. And this bird bone had a lot of small bumps on the top. So while I was drawing it, the question came to my mind, why does it have these bumps? And so that is a very common question to come up when you're nature journaling about something. But what am I actually asking? In this case, I realized that what I'm actually asking is what are the bumps for or what role do the bumps serve? So sometimes if you find yourself asking a why question, why does this structure exist? Why does this animal do that? It could be broken down into a, what is the function of this thing? Next, while I was drawing the same bone, I wrote, why is it smooth? And so in this case, I, that was the first question that came to my mind. But when I backed up a little bit, I realized my real question was, what utility might smoothness have? Or, so that would be like, how did it originate? And those are the questions that be can become difficult, but those are the ones, those are exactly what little kids are asking when they ask why questions is, what is the origin of something? And this is a tricky point in nature journaling because we make assumptions based on evolution, usually for most of us when we're nature journaling, about how something came about. And it's really easy. Evolution is something that's misunderstood by a lot of people, and we have a lot of biases of how the human brain works that makes it difficult to understand how evolution really works. So asking questions about why is the structure this certain way, why is this pollinator relating to this flower in a certain way, it brings up a lot of incorrect assumptions we might have about origins of forms and we need to be careful about that because sometimes there is not a clear answer, there's a lot of randomness in the natural world and sometimes asking why questions assumes that there's a reason and like a motivation or design behind things that we find. So one of the other ways I broke down the question of why is the bone so smooth is the first one was what utility might smoothness have? That's the origins. Why is it made that way? Which is already you can see assuming it was designed or something. The next question is how it, would it be an effect? So what might produce, produce smoothness as a side effect? So those are two ways that I broke down a why question. To give you another example, I was nature journaling about alligator lizard toes. You can see these legs and toes. And you can also see here that I was using this as Zoom, which was one of Amy's really cool nature journal challenge prompts. And so I zoomed in on this alligator lizard's feet. And one of the first questions I asked to show just, and this is what's coming to my mind naturally, even though I've been thinking about why questions a lot and it, why questions are frequent. So I asked, why is toe four the longest on so many lizards? You can see here I did a little diagram of the toe numbers and on vertebrates, toes are counted from the inside out. So like on ours, the thumb would be toe one, toe two, toe three, toe four, toe five. And even animals that only have three toes, 
um, or two toes, those numbers will still, or some animals only have one toe, um, those will still be counted with that same number. So you take away one and you take away five, and that animal now has toe two, three, and four, etc. Anyways, I've noticed that a lot of lizards have a very long toe four. So my question just automatically was, why is toe four the longest? So then I, I caught myself, I'm asking a why question, you know, and that has pitfalls. So then I realized what I'm actually, maybe what I should actually be asking is, what was the archetypal toe pattern in the first reptiles? That is a much more interesting question, and also it's one that is easier to answer. So making a why question, dissecting a why question and figuring out what other questions are inside of it and whether or not those are easier to answer is one reason to dissect why questions. I continued from that question to what was the archetypal toe pattern in the first vertebrates? So an even more specific question or just diving a little bit deeper with that question and still breaking up that original why question. And then what was the archetypal toe pattern in the first land vertebrates? So these are all ways of actually asking what that other question was, which is why is toe four the longest on so many lizards? And then, um, then my last question that I asked on this page, and this was just like a 15 minute journal because I'm doing a, a daily journaling practice where I have to journal every single day. My last question is why am I surprised by long ring fingers and pinkies? And so that's sort of a funny question. Every once in a while it's good to ask questions about your own process not just what you're seeing in nature. And those are frequently our blind spots is we don't ask questions about ourselves and our own processes. And so to break that question down, because since it's a why question and I'm talking about breaking down why questions, I would probably ask something like, what are the hidden assumptions that make me surprised by long ring fingers and pinkies? So I hope that was a helpful short little video dissecting why questions. So next time you are nature journaling and you find yourself asking lots of why questions, why questions are very powerful, but see if there's not other questions underneath the why that you can pick apart, dissect, and figure out what are the questions that are answerable and what are the questions that will actually lead you more into your line of inquiry and figuring out and discovering new things in nature because that is what nature journaling is all about and I'm super passionate about turning nature journaling into something that's not just about drawing pretty pictures in nature but a powerful tool for learning and discovery. So if you like this video, please check out some of my other videos. I have a whole bunch on YouTube and on my website. Have a good one.